I'm Chantelle Roberts, and I'm an expert witness for claims handling standards, practices, and procedures. I was an adjuster for 20 plus years. The Art of Adjusting is a vlog to help professionals and laypeople alike understand a bit more about the insurance claims industry. This is our fourth week discussing winter claims. Go to our YouTube channel for the previous ones about home physical damage claims such as ice, burst pipes, and fire and smoke. Today we're going to be discussing slip, trip, and falls. I discussed this very briefly in week 23, Winter Wonderland, but that was mostly for the homeowners. This week we'll be looking at it from a commercial perspective. So for the business owners, uh, in some states, removing ice and snow is non-delegable. This means that even if you hire a company to clear your parking lot or your sidewalk, you are still going to be responsible. And then you would be responsible for going after that company if there's a claim or if that company didn't clear your sidewalk or your parking lot in time. It's simply that you are the area where the buck stops. Um, you want to be sure to do sanding and ice melt on any kind of egress, ingress areas, meaning all of your entrances and exits. You might want to remember your emergency entrances and exits as well. And sometimes you need to do that even if it's still snowing. For example, if you know that you're going to have several days of snow, you don't want to let that pile up until you finally get a non-snow day to start cleaning that up because uh, there could be an accident that happens uh, in between the time that it's still snowing or when it started snowing until it ends snowing. Now that's not to say that you've got to go out every single hour and do this, but you do need to make sure that your parking lots and your areas to get into and out of the property is safe for not only visitors, but also your workers. For the adjuster, what you're going to want to do is get the videotape of uh, any areas where the claimant slipped or tripped and fell. You will also want to take a recorded statement of the claimant and any witnesses. Uh, take a look at the maintenance logs if the insured has them for when an area was salted or sanded and cleared. That would be very, very helpful. And finally, uh, look at the lease agreement for the insured if he doesn't own the building. The lease may say that the insured is responsible for ice and snow removal on the sidewalk in the parking lot, even though he doesn't own it. Look at your local laws and codes to also find out if this uh, snow and ice removal is non-delegable so that the person who does that removal, if not the actual insured, uh, you would be uh, in, uh, you could subrogate or seek reimbursement from that person. So this concludes our Winter Wonderland series of claims that could happen in the winter. This week we discussed slip and falls, trip and falls from a commercial perspective as a result of snow and ice. Every claim is different and there are different protocols for handling losses from each insurer. However, this being in the litigated world that we're in, please see below for some legalese. Few claims go to a jury trial and picking the expert who has been deposed the most or who has gone to trial the most may not be the correct expert. Failing to have a second set of eyes on a claim in order to save on expenses isn't always the best way to resolve a loss. As an expert witness and former claims adjuster, I'm sharing my experience on the art of adjusting. Thank you for listening. I appreciate your time.